My name is Ricardo Ortiz. I am 19 years old, and I'm one of the millions of dreamers in the United States. More than a million dreamers brought here by their parents. Many of those children say America is the only place they know. Ricardo came from Mexico at four years old. I feel like I'm American. I did all my school here. My education was here. My lifestyle is of an American. He even earned a soccer scholarship for college, but it was taken away when the school learned he is undocumented. And amid the debate in this country over what to do with the millions of undocumented immigrants and their children, the Pope has been outspoken, once saying that migrants and refugees are not pawns on the chessboard of humanity. But what will the Pope say right here tonight? As we return to the Vatican, about to connect Pope Francis to hundreds waiting for him in Texas. Now let's go to Sacred Heart Church on the U.S.-Mexico border, McAllen, Texas. The crowd erupting into cheers when they see the Pope. Chanting, we see him, we feel him, the Pope is here. And we send it to Mariana Atencio from our sister network, Fusion. Thank you, David. This church, just five miles from the border with Mexico, has been a temporary refuge for tens of thousands of undocumented immigrants. Immigrants like Ricardo, who I want to introduce to you today. Ricardo, come on up here. Ricardo has been living in Texas since he was four years old, and today he wants to tell you his story. Good morning, Father. Uh, it's been uh, my childhood dream to, to meet you one day. Coming out of middle school, I didn't really understand what it was to be an immigrant child. I didn't understand that because I was born on the other side of a border that life would be different for me. At the age of 16, 17, my dad had an accident. I had to become the breadwinner of the family. I had to be the person that supported our family. Having to support a family of six and having younger brothers look up to you really made it hard on me. There was times that Maybe we had to skip a meal. Maybe we had to eat just beans and, and a tortilla because there was no money. When it got time to, to head out to college, uh, they informed me that I wasn't able to attend the University of My Dreams because I wasn't a United States citizen. I ended up going to a community college, started working full time, and started supporting my family. I have a question for you, Father. It's with all these problems in the world, the poverty, our education system, and immigration itself, what do you feel is the solution to this problem? Thank you. Evidently, clearly, listening to your story, I can tell you that life made you a father before your time because you had to support your family from a very young age while your father was ill. But you knew how to do it because you had a father who had the courage to initiate you along that path of work and struggle and the courage afterward to put you in school with great sacrifice. There are many injustices in this life. Jesus was born on the street. He was born as a homeless person, and God sometimes, many times, speaks to us through his silence. The question you ask me, the number of people who experience hunger, who don't have the means to grow, who don't have the means to tend to their health, who die as as children who can't afford an education, the number of people who have no home, the number of people we see it now today who emigrate from their country looking for a better future and so many of them die along the way. I see Jesus on the cross. What to do? The world has to have greater consciousness of the fact that exploitation of one another 
is not the path. We are all created for friendship in society. All of us bear responsibility for everyone else. No one can say, this is as far as my responsibility goes. We are all responsible for everyone. To help each other out as best we can. Friendship in society, that's what God created us for. Speaking in soccer terms, I would say to you that the match is played between friendship in society and enmity in society. You take care of yourself and let the other person take care of themselves. That is not God's plan. That's what I can think of to say to you and also to express my admiration for you. Life turned you into a father before your time. So when you actually become a father and have your own children, keep educating them and bring them along the path that you learned from your father. Thank you. Thank you, Holy Father.